you guys about how to break into the commercial market in painting um and i'm going to tell you guys that it's uh it's kind of a, a a process so if you think you can just run out start up doing commercial um right away um it doesn't work that way really unless you've got some really good backers and mentors and stuff like that but here's how you kind of do that and things you need to prepare for now um, to break into that commercial market is number one you've got to be really good on your game so in other words you got to know your painting business inside and out um, you have to master this the trade yourself to the point where it's all just you know you can spray without getting over spray you can um, you can cut and roll as fast as anybody um, you have to know your game because if you have guys working for you you're they're not going to respect you if you don't know your game the guys that try to do the commercial without that end up being you know second third rate commercial painters and you don't make much money doing that you know if you're really good at what you do you make the most amount of money and that's what my videos are about so the first thing you want to do is work on your mastering your trade and while you're doing that you want to keep buying equipment so you're going to need ladders you're going to need spray rigs you're going to need some you know at least one spray rig you're going to need uh, all your hand tools uh, and you're going to need all those things pretty well in order um, like I have three sets of hand tools three sets of tools I mean spray rigs tools everything on three different trucks at all the time and each truck is designed for each type of commercial that I do so um, and I try to keep it maintained that way so that's a little thing that you, type of thing that you need to do um, to be able to do commercial but you're going to have to, the biggest thing you're going to have to change is your mindset. And where people uh, people go wrong in commercial is they just go out and they look at the building, they treat it like a house, and they go, well, I just start painting and then, you know, touch up and we're out of here, you know. Well, you've got tenants, first of all. You've got tenants that are in business trying to make a living while you are working on their shopping center. For instance, if you're doing a shopping center, if it's easier to do like, like tilt up walls and stuff like that because it's not retail, but I'm talking about retail for a second. So you've got tenants in a shopping center and if those tenants have masking all over their windows for a week or two days even, then they're losing money and and if you're not thinking about that as a commercial painter you are going to be a second or third rate you're going to be the one they don't call back so you have to be thinking about your the tenants and their labor loss and their business loss while you're blocking the front of their store so if you just keep that in mind the whole time when you're doing the job um, that you need to get out of there and schedule your time around that um, you're going to win. You're going to be the, the best at commercial. After a while, they're going to be calling you back and they're going to want you to do the building again the next time, you know, 10 years goes by or whatever, they're going to want the building repainted. So, um, you know, for instance, what I do when I do commercial is I'll start, say, at one, let's say I'm doing a shopping center. I'll do like three or four suites at a time or whatever I know that I can finish that day and sometimes you can't so you end up shutting down a little bit earlier than the next day you continue so I'll mask off whatever I'm going to mask off I'm going to shoot everything that I'm going to shoot then we're going to go through and do the handwork and we're going to square up those tenants so that all those tenants are done and then you don't have to go back there's nothing worse that I see when I see commercial painter and he's got the whole shopping center tore up. I watched several of them do it. They don't know what they're doing. That is not the way you do commercial. Um, you do that kind of thing. And like I said, you know, you're going to get, you know, you're, you're going to be, if you're the cheapest guy in town, then you'll, you'll, you'll be working. But then that's why, you know, do you want to be the cheapest guy in town and make the least amount of money? Well, if you want to make the most amount of money, you've got to learn how to do it the right way, which is make sure you square up as you go. So, I'll start in the front of the building. I'll do a section 
And then what we'll do is we'll move to the back of the building and work there during the business, more of the business hours uh, when the tenants and when people come and going for the, for the tenants that are in the, in the place. So typically that's how I'll do it. So I try to make sure I'm out of the front of the building by like say maybe 10 o'clock or something like that. So some, some shopping centers have hours that you require to work in. So, um, that's some of the ways you, that's, you have to have that mindset. So you've got to start working on being able to do that. If you do your houses that way, it helps to, um, you know, jumping all around, all around the house, all that walking costs you money, man hours. Sometimes you have to look at a big house. Like if you get a really big house, that's the way to do a big house. I mean, if you got like a, you know, 20,000 square foot house and don't think, I don't know how to do this stuff, guys, 20,000 square foot house, you do half the house complete done move to the next house or quarter of the house you go to the next portion do that whole section complete done do the next section complete done until the whole place is done otherwise you'll be spending time walking all around and you know that walking costs you money you get all your equipment set up in one place so those are the types of minds that you need to change uh, as you're you know, think about while now so that you can learn how to do it the other thing are our capital requirements. So um, the biggest reason that most people don't get into commercial painting is they can't do something called a net 30 or net 60 or net 90 for their money. Um, so when you break into the commercial market, you're going to expect to not get paid right away when you're done. You're going to have to start uh, waiting for your money. So you've got to have, you know, Start doing one project at a time, throw that in there with your houses and uh, take that on and expect that you're not going to get paid right away. And then what that does is eventually you start to build up capital requirements. So what happens is you develop a pipeline where you've got, you know, jobs that you've already done that you haven't got paid on. And you've got jobs that you're getting paid on that were done a month ago or two months ago or three months ago. And... So you get that cycle going and then little by little you start doing more until the pipeline is full and you've always got money coming in when you've got money going out. So that's sort of the way that you do that and break into it small. So I'm just trying to think of some of the other things that are important. Um, you, you need to understand insurance requirements. You know, uh, you're going to need to have, you know, probably a million dollars of liability insurance and you need to have workers comp insurance and you need to have workers comp insurance and even to bid the job and to get on the bid list so people think oh well you know i don't need that unless i've got guys even if you don't have anybody working for you if you work by yourself you still need the workers comp insurance even just to be able to bid the jobs so you know develop the money uh, put the money aside get it ready and start getting those things now as soon as you can so that you can start bidding those jobs and get them. Um, you know, it, you need to be more conscientious about your overspray. You need to be more conscientious about, you know, leaving ladders standing. You need to more, be more conscientious about uh, a lot of different things, being able to use lifts and things like that um, and, and work on those things now. That's the, all the key things that you're going to be using when you're doing commercial. So just a few little pointers there to get you started. Um, I'm going to let you guys go, but that's just the basics and uh, how you get into the market. Um, as far as getting the, the work, it is, you know, it all depends on what you're trying to get. You know, your property managers are your best friend. Those are the guys who you'll end up working for. And usually they'll go through a go-to person, you know, so there's usually another company involved too. And you're going to be end up being a sub of a sub. So that's usually how it works. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.